Please write down everything you can figure out about this object. In these videos, I'm going to be posing a lot of problems and questions for you. And what I'm hoping is that after every single question or problem that I pose, I hope that you're going to pause the video and actually try working out an answer on paper before you proceed with the video. You're going to get a lot more benefit from the videos if you're trying the problems on your own. Uh, now, this first question was supposed to be review. This is supposed to be just a review of ideas that we've seen in the previous series of videos on one-dimensional motion. Remember from the previous series, um, that the velocity tells you which way you're going. Well, the velocity here is pointing to the right, so we can say this object is moving right. You can see already the acceleration does not tell you which way you're going. That's something we've emphasized in the previous series of videos. The acceleration does not tell you which way you're going. Instead, the acceleration tells you whether you're speeding up or slowing down. In this case, the acceleration is anti-parallel to the velocity. And we've seen previously that when the acceleration is anti-parallel to the velocity, you're slowing down. Anti-parallel just means they're pointing in different directions. You can see that the acceleration and velocity are pointing in different directions. Of course, if the velocity were parallel to the acceleration, then we'd be speeding up. When the velocity and acceleration are parallel, we're speeding up. Parallel just means pointing in the same direction. These are all concepts that we've already seen in the previous series of videos. All right, so this should just have been a very easy review of concepts that we've previously seen in the previous videos. Now, all of these vectors refer to the same object. All of these vectors refer to the same object. Try writing down everything you can about this object. Again, I hope that you paused the video and tried that on paper. Well, uh, what can we say about our x component here? And uh, why don't we here say that the x component is the horizontal and the y component is the vertical. So what can we say about our x component? Well, this x component here tells us um, that we're moving to the right. The velocity tells you which way you're moving. Again, the acceleration doesn't tell you which way you're moving. The acceleration is to the left, but we're moving right. This acceleration is anti-parallel to the velocity, which means that we're slowing down. now referring to what's happening to our horizontal speed. We don't know whether we're slowing down overall. All we can say is that horizontally we're slowing down. Our horizontal motion is slowing down. Our horizontal motion is slowing down. Let's see what's happening to our vertical motion. Well, vertically over here, um, we are moving down. Vertically, we're moving down. And the acceleration vertically is parallel to the vertical velocity, so vertically we're speeding up. Vertically, we're speeding up. So this is everything we can say about this object. This object is moving to the right, but horizontally um, that motion is slowing down. And this object is also moving downwards, um, and that vertical motion is speeding up. Um, is it possible to be moving both to the right and moving down? Yeah, very easy. I can draw you a path for something that's both moving to the right and moving down. So clearly an object that would be following this path would be both moving to the right and moving down. And in this case, we're thinking about an object um, that's moving to the right, but slower and slower. And that's moving down, but it's moving down faster and faster. Uh, so you can already see that the, uh, the motion of this object is already starting to get kind of complicated. Two-dimensional motion is certainly much more complicated than one-dimensional motion. On the other hand, um, it shouldn't be that confusing. It shouldn't be that complicated because we have a really cool trick for analyzing two-dimensional complicated motion. The trick 
is that we just think about the horizontal and the vertical components separately. The key trick here is that even though we're moving in two dimensions, we just think about each of the components separately. First of all, we think about the one-dimensional horizontal component, and then we think about the one-dimensional vertical component. And the really neat thing is that the vertical component has no effect on the horizontal component, and the horizontal component has no effect on the vertical component. You can correctly interpret the horizontal component while you're not even thinking about the vertical. And you can understand the vertical while you're not even thinking about the horizontal. So this is why it was so important to go through the videos on one-dimensional motion before we go on to two-dimensional motion. Because our trick for two-dimensional motion is to split the two-dimensional motion up into components. Uh, and then each of those components is really just one-dimensional motion. This horizontal motion is just one-dimensional motion horizontally, and the vertical motion can just be thought of as one-dimensional motion vertically. The two components don't really interact or affect each other. So it, it turns out that this complicated motion is not as complicated as it seems, the key word is just separately. We have to think about the horizontal and the vertical components of the motion separately. It turns out that those two components don't really influence each other. Uh, the word separately is actually one of the most important words in physics. It turns out that a lot of tricks in physics are based on thinking about the different components separately. Um, so here we thought about the horizontal component separately from the vertical component. And then when we thought about the vertical component, we were thinking about that separately from the horizontal component. Uh, as long as you think about the two components separately, um, two-dimensional motion shouldn't be that much harder than one-dimensional motion because it's really just doing two examples of one-dimensional motion. One-dimensional motion for the horizontal and then one-dimensional motion for the vertical. Well, try to do the same thing for this problem that we did on the previous problem. Please try to write down everything you can figure out about this object. And also, after you've done that, please try to draw the path of the object. Remember that on the last example, I also drew the path of the object. So try to write down everything we can about this object and, and then draw its path. So please pause the video and give that a shot. Well, we're going to think about the horizontal and the vertical components separately. You can see we're using the x components to represent the horizontal, and we're using the y components to represent the vertical. Well, horizontally here, um, we're moving to the left, and our horizontal acceleration is parallel to our horizontal velocity. So horizontally, we're speeding up. horizontal speed is increasing. Now going over here, the vertical velocity is down, so we're moving down. Remember, it's not the acceleration that tells you which way you're moving, it's the velocity that tells you which way you're moving. Then the acceleration tells us well, whether we're speeding up or slowing down. Well, in this case, the vertical acceleration is anti-parallel to the vertical velocity, so vertically we're slowing down. Notice that the word down here means something different from the word down here. The word down here is referring to the direction of moving in the direction of down. And the word down here just means that we're not moving as fast as we used to. Maybe it's unfortunate that I'm using the word down to mean two different things, but I hope that'll be clear to you. So we're moving down, and vertically, um, the object is slowing, slowing down. Uh, this just means that the vertical speed is decreasing. Maybe that would be a better way of putting this. The vertical speed is decreasing. And I also asked you to draw the path. Well, we know the object is moving left and moving down. We can draw the path of the object like this. It's always moving down and to the left. The object is moving down and to the left. 